Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto, and bringing out a bite-sized piece. And today, just like the thumbnail suggests, there's some pretty big things going on, and 110 trillion could potentially be make its way into the market. So everything's great uh, as far as the ETF, but uh, I think there's a bigger story right around the horizon. So we'll take a look at uh, what's going on there. We'll take a look at, of course, the Bitcoin ETF that uh, has been uh, exceeding expectations, including my own. We'll take a look at Van Eck and their uh, uh, new uh, ETF coming about. Then also a, a good story as far as the macroeconomics, take a look at as far as Russia replacing the US dollar with something I think you can guess what that is. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look at what is going on into the market. And today is a pretty great day. All the things we've been talking about, all the things we've we've saved up for, some of us like myself, dollar cost averaging for four plus years, not selling too much along the way. These are great days. These are the days that we live for and it's looking pretty good. We've got a market cap of almost 2.72 trillion, somewhere around there. And uh, who knows, three trillion can be right around the corner. Uh, things happen to go pretty quickly as soon as we you know, just get over a couple of hurdles and this is one of those. So today we got Bitcoin price at almost 66, almost 67,000, Ethereum crossed over the 4,000 mark. Finance coin, look, everything's up. I, I can't even tell you how great it is today. Today is just, this is kind of like what it felt like in 2017 when you just had just days and days and days of just positive energy and things were going up. It didn't last that long, but those days were, I mean, they are euphoric. And those are the days that you live for as far as, as an investor. And these are the days that take that W, that big fat win. So that's essentially what is going on in the market. Everything's up. Uh, Litecoin's up at 10%. Sweet Mary and Joseph, I can't believe that. Terra, 14%, and so on and so forth. So pretty happy there. So if we take a look at, I mean, the market's up. Now let's take a look, let's just peel behind a little on-chain data. And if we take a look at, um, this is um, from CryptoQuant, uh, all exchange future open interest is at an all-time high. These are all different exchanges. We're gonna take a look at a little deeper. And then also, I think this is more telling. We're at a three-year low for the amount of the exchange reserves of Bitcoin. So meaning that as people start to take off their Bitcoin off the exchanges, why do they do that? Because they're not selling. And if you have this off the exchanges at a three year low, it means that not only are we going up in price, but people are like, nope, you're not gonna get any more of my Bitcoin, that is it. And uh, also, we take a look at uh, shorts versus longs right here from bybt.com. You can see that uh, green, green of the longs and, and uh, the, the pinkish is the shorts. In the last 12 hours, you see more of an inclination towards people going long, which is kind of, it's eerily impressive because usually when we have a massive outpouring of, of price appreciation for Bitcoin, you usually see a little bit more uh, of the shorts, but that's, that's not the case today. I think people are really looking uh, that things are going, are doing pretty well. And then also if we take a look at uh, the Pi Cycle Top, which is one of my favorites because it's been right four times. <laughs> it's been right four times in its existence and because it's, it's called out the tops four times. Uh, you got two in 2013, and uh it because after what happens is this yellow line the 111 day moving average crosses over the 350 day moving average and it just every time it's been correct so it's happened twice in 2013 once in the 2017 and it already happened uh once in uh what was this april when we topped out and then you see over here let me bring this down is that because of this massive dip that we felt in july because of that, the moving average goes down to 111 day. And now we've got a ton of room to run up to 100, 120, 150. I've always thought it's going to be 130K, but, uh, you know, I could be wrong, but it's looking uh, looking pretty good. And over the last couple of days, I put out a couple of videos about my apprehension for this ETF. And I didn't really know which way I was going to go. I was just going to be hands off. So, uh, and I didn't really want to. Uh, sell a ton. I didn't want to buy a ton. I just wanted to sit back because all the hard work that you do is a dollar cost average. It's not done here. It's done when nobody wants to do the hard work. When you're sitting there and there's no price appreciation, everything is flat or it goes down or you buy the dips. That's when all the hard work is done. This is not the time for the hard work. That time's passed. Now it's just time for you just to sit back and go, I did my job. I did my job. It was hard work. I got laughed at by friends, family, and everybody else around me. Doesn't matter to me. Who's laughing now? So that's where we're at, and it's a pretty damn good day. I'm pretty happy about that. So 
that's what's going on there. And lastly, I just want to take a look at this. Oh my God, this sweet candle right here. Look at this candle. We're on the four hour. And of course, the RSI is a little bit high. We are a little bit over overbought. But look at this candle. This was uh, not too long ago, 20th October of noon. You get one from 63,000 all the way. Let me blow this up. 63. Jeez. There we go. 63,000, somewhere in this little small wick, all the way up to 67 in the span of two to three hours, somewhere in the, in the four-hour time range. So that's, to me, that's that's amazing, and uh, we'll see how it all pans out. But there's some there's some big stories to get into, and I think ETF is great, but what I really want to talk about is this $110 trillion incoming. And when I saw this, I actually sent off uh, to Alex Maschioli, Alex Maschioli show, and I'm like, Hey man, is this as big as I think it is? And he goes, look, he goes, I know the people there. And he goes, this is a bigger story than uh, I've ever heard uh, in the last uh, week or so. ETFs are great. And I was like, that's what I thought. So when I'm looking at this, I'm like, this is a pretty big deal. What is it? 110 trillion can now offer crypto trading to clients via interactive brokers. And we had talked about this two, three months ago when interactive brokers came in and said, we're gonna start to do cryptocurrency. They're like, okay, whatever. But here we are today this will be the slow moving catalyst where the ETF was the fast mover. This is going to slowly bring those people in and I'm gonna tell you why. So global investment firm Interactive Broker Group announced Monday the launch of crypto trading for RIAs, registered investment advisors in the US. The offering will enable RIAs to trade in custody, trade in custody, trade and custody Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bcash, Bitcoin Cash, excuse me, via Paxos Trust. And uh, they will be able to manage their clients' crypto holdings alongside, check this out, the traditional investments, stocks, options, futures, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. If you are a good RIA, you will look to the future and say to yourself, look, I don't really understand cryptos that much per se, but I see where things are going. And if we allocate a small portion to your portfolio, Pete, whatever your name is, uh, I think we can offset some of these balances because they're it's it's so volatile. I think one to two percent, one to three percent is is uh, not going out of the way of craziness. So let's just give that a shot, and then we'll we'll go from there. If they do something like that, you got 110 trillion. You got a lot of money moving in. This could be big. So 14, and then of course the question is, well, how many RAs out there? 14,000 investment advisors registered with the U.S. SEC have reported nearly 61 million clients in 2020. So 14,000 advisors, 61 million clients. Not too bad. The industry is approximately 110 trillion in assets under management. That's a lot of money that needs a home, and I've got a great place for you. To finish up, Steve Sanders, Executive Vice President of Marketing, said the same thing I just said. He says, allocating a small percentage of assets to crypto as part of a well-diversified portfolio has steadily become more commonplace and advisors may wish to recommend crypto to their clients. Yes, that would be great. So this is a bigger story than I think what people have been talking about because everybody's so caught up in the ETF. And it's a great story. Don't get me wrong. But I think there has to be growth and there has to be a new mountain to climb. And I think this is one of those catalysts that can push us uh, to even higher heights. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. The Bitcoin ETF, which everybody loves. I love it too. And uh, I've been a little apprehensive, as I said before, but you gotta understand, if you've been here since 2021, if you just got in 2021, you're like, this is a no brainer. Why wouldn't they introduce an ETF? It's because we've been hearing the same song and dance since 2012. Did a video about this about a year ago. That's Roger Veer from Bitcoin Cash fame. And he did a video in 2012 where he talked about ETFs right around the corner and guess what, 2013, right around the corner, 2014, right around the corner. Before you know it, you're like, I, I've heard this song and dance before. That's why I was so like, yeah, sure. Once we got this, it's like the shackles are off. And now we're going to see a lot more, an increase in adoption, I think, because people will say to it and go, wow, it's an ETF and it was approved by the SEC. Well, it must be safe. So, you know, I, I've that's what the SEC is supposed to do, right? Protect the consumer. <laughs> so if they did that, then uh, maybe I should get into this, something like that. But again, 
we saw this in 2012. I'll link the video in, in the end. And it's pretty funny just to watch Roger talk about it. Like it's like it's 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 almost here, guys. It's in, it's it's inevitable. So when we talk about that, these are big things. So the ETF. It is one of the top ETFs of all time. Here's what's going on. So the this looks like the final tally is going to be around a billion or 990 million in trading for BITO. That's a ticker name on its first day of trading. Eric Balchunas, I think I nailed that. The senior ETF analyst for Bloomberg said, this is easily the biggest day one of any ETF in terms of natural volume. It traded more than 99.5% of all ETFs, including some other big ones. Uh, this defied our expectations. I think it defied a lot of people's expectations, even my own. Balchunas stressed that the result of today's first Bitcoin uh, performance in the US makes life that much harder for the next in line ETFs to succeed because Every day, once an, once an ETF gets known and there's so much liquidity, it's hard for anybody to really put their money into and go, well, there's already this other one, so why do I need you? So that's why it was so important to get this very first one. So I tip my hat to ProShares to get this thing done because the next ones, it's going to be an uphill battle. I mean, they're still going to make money and that's good for them, but not like they would have been for the first. So we'll just say that uh, that's going to be a bummer for our next story. Uh, and then lastly, it says, what does this mean for assets? Uh, my guess is about half of this volume will end up as flow in the next two days, probably looking at 750 million by the end of the week, something like that. Tomorrow's volume will be interesting. And if it comes down to earth, and I can kind of see that mentality, it's the same mentality when Coinbase went public. Everything was going pretty good, and then all of a sudden, pfft, just down to the ground. So if we take a look at the BITO, the ETF. Uh, you can see that this nice little graph here, let me go over here so I can see it. You can see the whole thing. So if we take a look at the graph itself and we pull it over, everything started yesterday, okay? So today's the 20th of October. Uh, 10, 19 in the morning, we started around 40 bucks, 40 hours per share. Then it just kind of, a little dip here, not big action. Then it just went sideways a little bit and then it just started to really pick up some steam. And around the close of business, right around here, 10, 19, we were hitting around 41.80, almost 42. Then the next day when everything opened up, we're at 42.16, and then we just took off like a rocket. And before you know it, we're at 43, almost 44, and over a billion dollars changed hands on the first day. I'm curious to see what happens on this day. A little bit of sideways, but it's much higher than uh, what we're at. So these things are doing well. I expect to see some uh, some more action coming up, but who knows? It can cool off, but already it's a huge success, and uh, these are the things I like to see. So let me know what you think about this ETF. It looks like it's uh, been a pretty good one so far. And uh, what's not good is second place. And that is VanEck. And VanEck is amazing to me that uh, you get one ETF approved after so much time, then you get a second one. Here you go. Here's another one approved. But unfortunately, just like was said, second one might just be not too great. But it is good to see because we have, that's two futures ETF, which means maybe a spot ETF is right around the corner. And Grayscale just applied for a spot ETF two days ago. So we'll see how this works out. VanEck will join ProShares in launching a Bitcoin uh, ETF next week. The company revealed it had secured its filings. And uh, this indicated SEC has given the company permission to launch its fund after October 23rd, which is a Saturday. So if you're VanEck, I hate to say this, but it does kind of suck. If, if you're VanEck and you're like, man, look at this volume, we could have been there. We just were just a little bit off because... Who knows? Maybe ProShares has got some some good relationships with good old Gary Gensler. Don't sue me. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's something else. But it's a bummer for VanEck, but it's good for us because uh, a second ETF gets approved. It'll be more talked about in the public. People will say, I think this is safe. They can get into it. Oh, and then, oh, by the way, if they take a look at the uh, historical charts as far as like the Bitcoin appreciation, best performing assets, asset class of all time, or at least the last last 10 years, and uh, I think uh, could do pretty well. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. I think uh, it's a bummer for Van Eck. What are you going to do? And this leads me to my last point about Russia. And I, I, I'd been talking about this before. And I thought, why wouldn't countries get away from sanctions from the United States, especially with the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency, when they can just use cryptocurrency? Well, now Russia had already been hinting to that. Now that might actually happen. So this is amid ongoing sanctions. 
The U.S. loves that. The government of Russia has been working to limit the country's dependence on the U.S. dollar. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs now says it's possible to partially replace the greenback uh, in currency reserves and trade settlements with other currencies, even digital assets in the future. And in its effort to counter the negative effects of expanding U.S. sanctions, the Russian Federation is putting an emphasis on de-dollarization, and the rest of it just kind of goes over the same song and dance. But here's the thing. If somebody from the government, the Russian government ministry, comes out and says, you know what, we're thinking about replacing the U.S. dollar because we're sick of these sanctions, and we're, sick, we're sick of it uh, having to rely on this all the way around, why couldn't they just get out, of, out from underneath the uh, U.S.'s thumb and just go, you know, we're just going to go someplace else. It's working pretty well for Central America. We'll see how it works out over here. And if uh, people are going to be using it, why, don't, why not us? So this could change the landscape, and it could also cause a very heated accumulation for not just Bitcoin, but other digital assets. And that's what we got. So look, uh, I know uh, there's a lot of things going on, and uh, it's a great day, but don't lose your head. You know, these are the days that we live for, and um, I think there's there's more on the horizon. Me personally, I just wanted to sit back, kind of see how things went. I'm a pretty reserved person, but now I think we're kind of off over that hump. We'll see how it goes in the next couple of days, but yeah, we're off to the right start. I can uh, feel pretty good, especially for a bull run towards the end of the year, maybe in the January, February, but that's it. So look, uh, if you made it all the way to the end, first I want to say thanks. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Uh, also consider subscribing, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. And uh, that's it for today, and I'll see you in the next one.